Hi YouTubers, welcome back to Diecast Culture and in today's video it's a follow-on from the previous one. We're going to take a look at the uh, Royal National Lifeboat Institute lifeboat which you can see in front of you. Um, we're going to look at three Corgi major trucks dating back from the 1960s and lastly we'll take a look at the Fast and Furious Jada in the boxes in the background together with the Fast and Furious Transformer. Thank you ever so much for everybody watching and um, if there's any messages I haven't responded to yet I will do. They're always much appreciated. I was at the Eastbourne International Air Show last weekend where the Royal National Lifeboat Institute was representing themselves. Um, why? Because it takes place over the sea just on the shore and um, popped into their uh, shop to um, see what they've got and came up with this. This is around about 172 scale um, but it doesn't really matter. My preference would be 164. It doesn't matter because it's really quite a large um, inflatable boat or semi-rigid inflatable. Let's get it out of the packaging and take a look. Corgi. And it sits quite nicely on there. So this is the Atlantic 85 B-Class lifeboat to support inshore lifeboat crews. It's been in service since 2005 and uh, takes a crew of about three or four people, survivor capacity 20, uh, maximum speed 35 knots. And um, they say the length here is 2.85 meters, which I know can't be right. The length is actually 8.44 meters or 27 feet, which uh, sounds much more like it. Um, the beam is 2.85 meters and um, draft 0.53 meters. And it's got two Yamaha outboard engines, uh, total 230 horsepower. A bit more interesting information here if you're into boats, um, it's got a manually operated self-writing mechanism that deploys an airbag mounted on top of the A-frame. Um, and it's capable of being beached in an emergency without sustaining damage to engines or steering gear. Uh, it's fitted with radar and VHF direction finding equipment and it can be operated up to force 6, 7 wind scale and at night about force 5 or 6. Um, it's got an intercommunications intercom between the crew and VHF radio via their helmets and it's got DGPS, whatever that is, and a chart plotter. It also carries a searchlight night vision equipment and illuminating para flares for nighttime operations. So you can see there's currently three seats in it and there's a small steering wheel at the front, or four seats, sorry. And um, the base is, is made of metal, so it's a Corgi product made of metal with the sides made of plastic. And I love the realism, I think it's been done really well. And I thought it wouldn't be complete without a uh, Matchbox uh, pickup truck and a trailer from Greenlight. And I will most certainly be making a, um, another video on this in the future uh, with some close-up photography. So next up are the Corgi Major trucks at last. Um, I know you guys have probably been waiting for these. They've appeared in about two or three previous videos and um, so I'm now going to do a close-up in detail of each one. These two fire trucks are uh, both uh, American La France and um, one is open to the elements and the other one has got a nice cozy warm cab. And uh, the guys on the right are probably saying, you lucky bastards. Okay, so. It's 
So it's got a nice dual headlights and emergency lights. The uh, plastic chrome has uh, faded a little bit. American La France. So we've got a total of five firefighters. One of them is driving. At least let's hope one of them is driving. And it's quite a nice crest there. The rubber tires. Once again, the scale on this is one to 60 or thereabouts. Would have been perfect if it was one to 64. But they still look, look okay next to a Hot Wheels. And um, this is just such an awesome, awesome product. So, so much playability. You've got these stabilizers which fold down and out, and there is one on the other side. And Everything on this, apart from the tires and the ladders, are is metal. Corgi Major Toys, Great Britain. The main ladder is metal, but the, the rest of the ladders are plastic. And there is this guy at the back. So he's clearly holding his hat because it's possibly windy. Um, he's probably really pissed off because he's also out in the elements and um, the guy, the reason why he's got a steering wheel, and I'm sure a lot of you know this, is that these fire engines, which I don't think exist anymore, uh, had steerable trailers. So if they had to get around um, tight bends, the guy at the back would, uh, uh, would steer the rear wheels to assist in getting the trailer around. I think the being probably quite a few accidents with a bit of miscalculation or perhaps lack of communication between driver and this guy. Um, but yeah, it's, it's kind of quite amusing. There is a wheel here, which if you turn, it elevates the ladder and it's just awesome. And then the next really cool piece is the other one actually extends the ladder. So this is done with a series of um, pulleys or cotton, um, cotton, thin cotton. And um, I'll extend this all the way and then we'll just back out with the camera so you can have a look. There you go. And um, there's a, a ton of other ladders underneath here, all plastic ones. There must be a total of six extra ladders. That's just crazy um, in terms of quality of product. Remember, this was not necessarily considered a collector's piece for adults when it was uh, issued in the shops in the late 50s, early 60s. It was meant to be a toy for kids. And, um, you know, you just have to look at the quality and the detail for what is essentially not a premium item it's just a standard toy so obviously things have changed in this competitive world with um, with cost efficiency and we're going to wind this back down and i've got to work out how uh, the how this actually works it's really quite confusing but there's a piece of cotton on that drum which runs up here and it's connected to a couple of the, the rungs of the ladder you can't really see it here but it's so designed to be operated by this so yeah so pleased with that 
Um, here is the enclosed cab. Um, this product is identical uh, other than the enclosed cab. This one has lost the steering guy at the back. And um, in fact, what they did change when they bought the product out is they got rid of the, the pulleys. So um, it just means that you have to raise the ladder with your, with your hand and extend the ladder with your hand rather than using those that pulley system. Otherwise, it's, it's all the same, just different color ladders. And um, there are still the same number of firemen. So you've got three in the front and two in the back. And they're thinking, yeah, we're really nice and warm. This is really cool. So as you can see, they go together pretty well. So at last, we are going to take a look at this uh, car transporter, which is a Corgi Major 1146 Tri-Deck Carry More. And I think the truck, the, uh, the tractor unit is a Scammel. And this is just simply awesome. So it is all metal and we're just gonna take these cars off. And um, this is a separate piece. Um, very often when you see these on eBay, uh, the piece is missing. So I bought this uh, as a separate purchase. Um, some guy uh, was um, just recasting them and that just slots onto there. And when it's not being used, the idea apparently is for it to be slotted on there. The only thing this doesn't have are wing mirrors. Um, not sure if ever it came if it ever came with them. It's got dual headlights. Spare wheel. And you've got the uh, big steering wheel in there. A couple of seats. And uh, yeah, it's a scammel on the base there, Corgi Major. Just love the um, chassis details and the differential. Corgi toys. Okay, so it's got Mazak diecast there. Um, the Mazak is actually Zamak, which is the metal alloy from which um, diecast toys are still made today. Um, it's a mixture of zinc and aluminium. Mazak is the former trademark, so it's now Zamak. I think there's meant to be uh, a few more plastic chocks here. And what is so nice is that these little pieces are still working. 
put that on there. Once the top deck is, is full, this goes back up and then goes in there all the way to the end. And once again, once that's filled, and then just goes in there. So, tons of space in so this. You can carry a total of um, uh, six, eight cars, eight vehicles. And nice little detail here. It's a little trailer stand. So when you unhitch it from the cab, all you need to do is just to do that. I think this is uh, worthwhile of doing some um, still images um, in a future video. It's just such an awesome piece. Okay guys, what you've all been waiting for. Let's take a look at Optimus Prime. I found this in the local Aldi supermarket in the UK and um, I just thought it just looks um, really sharply designed as most Jardas are. What it doesn't do, being a transformer, is transform. On the back you can see the others in the series and I have to say I think the one I've got is probably the coolest. It was just this one that was left on the shelf. It is, um, despite being really nicely styled, it's quite a basic toy, it's got a light weight to it. Um, the cab and the sleeper unit is die cast. Um, everything else is plastic. Um, just one observation on it. The um, colouring in certain areas, uh, the blue is uh, really solid, but the, the red and the yellow in places I feel are a little bit sort of not, could have been applied possibly a little bit more thickly. Otherwise, I think it's pretty awesome. And for context, we've got a Hot Wheels Honda N600. So you can see its scale. The scale on this is 1 to 60 ish, certainly a little bit bigger than 164. And um, I've got a, um, I've got another car transporter trailer, which is around about 160 scale, which I think would go so well with this. So you can just see the interior steering wheel and dashboard sort of wrap around, focusing towards the driver. And yeah, it's got a couple of seats in there as well. As this video started to get quite long, I've decided to save the opening of these Fast and Furious Jardas to another video. Speak to you soon, guys. Bye.